stop and ask yourself for a minute, what questions are you bringing to the practice? It's like asking what shape is your ignorance, because the shape of your ignorance is going to shape what you define as a satisfactory answer. And the same in your practice. You define satisfactory results in your practice by the questions you bring to it. This is why the Buddha was very specific on what questions are worth asking, which ones are not, because they really shape the way you act, the shape, the way you look at the results of your actions, and which results you finally decide to be acceptable, satisfactory. And he recommended that the best questions to bring to the practice revolve around the questions of skill. What are you doing right now that's skillful? What are you doing that's unskillful? Because these questions have lots of ramifications. They mean that your actions are important. Because your actions are what shape the world you live in. Even though we may be sitting in the same room here, each of us is living in a different world, a different world of experience. Our feelings, our thoughts, our sense perceptions make up this world, and they're very different from person to person. And your actions really do shape this world. Actions from the past, actions in the present are combining right now to shape what you experience. And so the Buddha, that's why the Buddha said it's important to focus on your actions, what you're doing right now. And the, asking the question of skill and lack of skill, that adds another dimension as well. Realizing that you can develop more skillful ways of acting, more skillful ways of speaking, more skillful ways of thinking. And they'll have an important impact on the shape of your life, the shape of your experience. And where does skill come from? Well, skill comes from being alert, mindful. inquisitive. And these are all the qualities you want to develop in your practice. We, work, we start with the breath as our basic focus, as a way of re developing very, very basic mindfulness, very basic alertness, and also to pull our mindfulness and alertness back close to the mind itself. Because all too often we're sensitive to things that happen many times many miles away. But we miss what we're doing, what we ourselves are doing. The mind has this amazing tendency to hide itself from itself, and particularly with, around the area of intention. What are you doing right now? Why are you doing it? To bring your attention to the breath, these things become clear, because these intentions appear right near the breath. So as we focus on the breath, it's not simply a beginning exercise that you drop for later other things. It's bringing the mind right to the point where it should be, right here in the present, right where the mind and the body meet. And the immediate question is, are you skillful in staying with the breath? What is the most skillful way of focusing on the breath and maintaining that focus? Part of it has to do with the, the way you focus, where you put your attention, how much pressure you apply. But it also has to do with the question of how you're breathing. You really do have the choice of breathing in many different ways, you know. And so take advantage of that freedom, take advantage of that potential for adjusting your experience of the present. It's amazing how much the way you simply changing the way you breathe can really put a whole new cast on things. So we work with this. It's an object that's right in front of us. As our basic exercise and beginning to answer that question about skill and lack of skill. 
Because as you work with the breath, you begin to get more sensitive to the mind as well. And you begin to see which qualities in the mind are helpful and which ones are not helpful. And then you try to apply that same insight to the rest of your life. Try to bring to your whole life the same qualities of interest, attention, alertness, mindfulness, inquisitiveness that you would bring to the meditation. So you start seeing that in all areas of your life, that question you keep asking, what's the most skillful way to do this, becomes a really good question to ask. Whatever situation you're in, it reminds you of your potential to make a difference. And also helps you see where your old habits really not all that helpful to yourself or the people around you. This is a question that can really make a difference in life. There's so many questions out there that make no difference at all. There's a long list in the canon. Is the world eternal? Is the world not eternal? Is it finite? Is it infinite? Is the soul the same thing as the body? Is it something else? What happens to the person who attains the goal? Do they exist? Do they not exist? The Buddha says these questions don't get you anywhere at all. And in addition to not getting you anywhere, the fact that you, if you spend time asking them and pursuing them, that's unskillful karma, karma right there. Wasting valuable time. The questions he recommends focus around the Four Noble Truths, which are simply an extension of those questions on skill and lack of skill. In other words, when you start asking the question of skill, it implies cause and effect. Actions have results. It also implies that some actions are preferable to others because they give better results than the other ones. Once you've got those variables, you've got the Four Noble Truths, cause and effect, desirable, undesirable. Craving is an unskillful cause, gives rise to an undesirable effect, which is suffering. The path of practice is a skillful cause, which gives rise to a desirable effect, the end of suffering. The questions that revolve around these areas, these are the ones that are worth asking. These are the ones that you should bring to your practice. As for other questions, you can put them aside. Because once you deal with the problem of why is it the mind is causing itself suffering, can it learn ways not to cause itself suffering? Once you really explore that one question, that one set of questions, when you come to the answers, then you include all those other questions that you put aside. And you see that some of them either get their answer in the course of your practice, or you begin to realize that they really weren't proper questions at all. So try to be very clear about what the important issues in your life are, what the important questions are, because it really has a shaping influence on how the whole rest of your practice goes. If you ask the right questions, it can take you all the way to awakening all the way to the end of suffering.